welcome. This video will show you how to use the Blackboard Collaborate Building Block to create sessions and link them into your Blackboard courses and organizations. I'm going to go ahead and log into Blackboard. The reason I referred to the Blackboard Collaborate Building Block is that as part of our pilot, we have installed a building block on our Blackboard system which fully integrates Blackboard Collaborate with the course management system to make it very easy to install a session and to link to recordings right in your class. This is just a test course and I'm currently logged in as a teaching assistant but I do have the ability to add a Blackboard Collaborate session. To access Blackboard Collaborate you want to click on Course Tools underneath the control panel and then click on Blackboard Collaborate. The Blackboard Collaborate list page will come up and I'll click on Create Session. There are four tabs that come up and we'll go through those one by one and I'll point out the most important things. Under Session Information, you want to include a descriptive title. By default, Blackboard Collaborate automatically populates this with the name of the course. This is a BB testing course. If you were in your BA 102 course, it would probably have BA 102 dot section number dot W12 for Winter 12. Let's say I just want to create a virtual room that I'm going to reuse for office hours every week. It is specific to this course, meaning that I'll add a link and all my students and others enrolled in this course can attend the session. Under Schedule, because I'm going to use this course, this room over and over again, I'm going to create the start date for the first time that I'm going to use it. Let's say it'll be a Tuesday night. We'll go with 7 p.m., not 7 a.m. And instead of having the end date be 9 o'clock on that Tuesday night, I'm going to make this room open until the end of the semester so I can reuse it. The one thing you have to be sure of here is that you don't choose a start date that's in the past. And you can only choose an end date that is within a year from the start date. So you could have a room that is open for one year or less. Early session entry. This is an option which allows you to decide how early before the start date will you allow users in. 0, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 or 60. I'm just going to say 15 minutes. And then I'm going to go down to the session attributes. These are all optional settings. The only one I'm going to point out, two or three that I would consider turning on or off. One of those is the supervised. I'm going to check this box. Moderators may view all private chat messages in the session. What this means is that when you have a session going, if you've enabled private chats, then users can chat privately amongst themselves. If you find that it's important for your class to be sure that if private conversations are going on that they're related, this gives you the ability as the moderator to see what students are talking about and if they're getting off task talking about something unrelated to the course, you can actually take away their private chat privileges. I'm also going to select Allow In-Session Invitations. This makes it easy when you're in the room to send an email to anyone in the world that you'd like to give access to the room. They just click on a link and they'll be directed right into the room. 
They don't have to log into Blackboard. So if you're bringing in a guest from another location or another instructor who doesn't happen to be enrolled in your course, this gives you an easy way to do it. The important thing here is that when you're in the room, you can actually send the invitation from there. So you could do it on the fly. Before I hit submit, I want to go over and just touch on the other three tabs. Participation. The top here is advanced. What you can do is allow groups in your course to create their own collaborate sessions and run them without you being there. So if you have a lot of group work where this might come in handy, you can give different individuals the ability to create sessions and run them. The important thing though is down under number two, external invites. If you know right now that you'd like to invite someone to access your room, so someone who's not enrolled in your course, someone else at the college, or perhaps someone in industry that you'd like to have in as a guest speaker, you can actually type in their name. Don't enter the display name. It will prompt them to type in their name. All you need to include is the email address. So let's say I want to invite Megan Willie. I type in her email address and hit add. And when I'm all done and I click submit to create this room, a email will automatically be generated for her. Sharing. The top option allows you to pre-populate the virtual room with some files that you're going to use. The only nice thing about this option is if you do use it here, you can access the content collection and bring in items from your Blackboard Drive. When you're in the room, you can also bring in files as you need them or want to include them. However, unless you have the Blackboard Drive installed on your computer, you wouldn't be able to easily access what you have saved in the Blackboard content system. Finally, content area is the last tab. And I just want to show that this is how you can go ahead and create a link to your Blackboard Collaborate room somewhere in the course. Now this first thing, content item name, you're going to want to go ahead and edit that because by default, Blackboard Collaborate does not bring in what you've indicated the title of this session is from the first tab. Instead, they pre-populate this box with the name of the course. So I'm going to call it Virtual Office Hours. And then I'll put this under Course Documents. So you just select from the available content areas which already exist in your course and click the arrow to move it to the right. Now you can give this a description, more information under a comment field, and then indicate to your students whether this is a required activity or not. I'm going to enter both the description and comments so you can see how those look. Okay. All right. And then scroll down. I'm not going to put date restrictions on this. This is similar to any other item when you're adding it to your course in Blackboard. You can restrict when students can actually see and access the link. But I want to add it now and I want them to be able to use it now. So it let me know success. My session was created successfully. I always want to make sure that you see that green message because if not, it wasn't successfully created and added to your course. And instead of giving you a red error message, 
you might have to go back through some of the other tabs to actually see what might be holding things up. Now if you scroll down this virtual office hours at the very bottom that is what I just added these are other things that are available for people who are in this class they were created by another instructor and you'll see that because this room is not yet available it's set to be available tomorrow it doesn't have the icon next to available and I have the ability to delete it these rooms since they're currently within their dates I can't delete them and I just want to go ahead and show you if I click on course documents how my link looks for students and this very bottom link is the one that I just created so if I click on this link when the room is available right now it's not so it would give me a message that is not currently available but either myself or anyone in this course can click on this link and go directly into the right virtual room. I have a description and then you'll see right underneath it are more comments. Because I did not check the box for required, it also says suggested underneath, which since students may or may not need to attend my office hours, suggested works just fine for this case. And that completes this training video.